morning everyone we're in peru illinois and moses is here again still here still here <laughs> hanging around we're waiting for our 10 hours we have so we can continue on the road we're gonna run together down to gary like we were saying yesterday and he's got to continue east and i'm gonna head north up into michigan then into canada further up into Michigan. We'll figure it out. Just walking into the truck stop here to see what they got to offer. Wasting another hour until the law says we can get on the road again. <laughs> law is always getting in the way. We haven't had enough rest yet. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting here doing pre-trips on our trucks and uh, these guys over here have this wicked drone. I don't know if you can see it. That's like a performance drone. I was thinking of sending mine up there to, to duel with it, but mine's not that fast. <laughs> I gotta get one of those. That's more of a sport drone though. I don't think I could film vlogs with that, but you know, I see people filming with those kind of things on YouTube though, and they like do all these crazy stunts and go through Dude, bridges and stuff. Fast, man. Yeah, he's been flying all around here. How fast do you think it was going? Like, I have no idea, but it's food. 80 miles an hour? He, he goes way up high and lets it free fall. And then just there, it goes. there he goes. And he's slowing down. Huh? He's probably getting some awesome shots. I kind of want some of his footage. <laughs> I wonder if he'd send me the footage. <laughs> yeah, I have a, I have one too, but I don't use that often. But it's it's nothing like this. Here he comes, he's coming low, he's going to go up. <laughs> it's been going for quite a while, that battery's pretty good in that little thing. <laughs> uh, it's, looks like there's a dad and his son over there having, having fun. They have like these goggles on too, so it's like virtual reality. That would be fun, I don't have those. Okay, we're just about ready to roll out. Route. Okay, let me make sure you're taking me to Sarnia, Port Huron, Sarnia. Okay, so we're about 674 kilometers from Port Huron and Sarnia. I still haven't gotten my confirmation that I'm clear for crossing the border. I'm gonna have to call in. All right, we will do that in a little bit. We're ready to roll out. Let's see if Moses is ready. All right, man, you ready to roll? Yeah, sir. Well, I go on out, Oh. <laughs> Time to go. Double check, make sure my trailer's gonna come with me. Yep, all right. Officially rolling. It's 
got to remember to call in and make sure that I've been cleared for the border. So we gotta go this way to go that way. Okay, got it. for trucking. turn and go eastbound. I'm really gonna go straight to east. There's a little bit of a shortcut here, Karen. Karen's not awake yet. If she wants me to turn down here, go do a U-turn and then come back that way. Ha! Oh, you think I'm too heavy for this bridge? That's funny, that's funny. It's obviously a glitch. It's a truck route. There's a bunch of roads like that in the GPS where they, she thinks it's not a truck route, but it is. That's why you don't trust your GPS. They always double check their work. All right, let's get out there. This is I-80 eastbound. We're at exit 73 in Illinois. Headed towards the south side of Chicago. We're gonna cross into Indiana and up into Michigan. There comes Moses behind us over there.
up to Chicago area here, so traffic is starting to pick up a little bit. Got three lanes across. Here comes Moses up beside me again. Show off. <laughs> Truck is clean. I need to wash mine too. Look at the bugs on my window. I never get tired of watching that roll past. area just inside of Michigan. We're already in the last state before we get back into Canada. And I'm still waiting on my border clearance. That means there must be issues with my paperwork because I sent it all in. And usually it doesn't take too long. But today it's taken a while. I actually sent it in yesterday already. It's still not clear now. It should have been clear by now. So it's getting me a little bit concerned. But I'm going to go the rest of the way through Michigan here and see what happens. Hopefully by the time we get to the border we're clear because I want to cross into Canada tonight yet. Another blue beacon. We're in Michigan now. So we'll see how these guys do. The last blue beacon was in Fargo. 
and I was hoping they could get some of that grime from up north off my truck. They got most of it off, a lot of it off, but it's time to bring it in for another wash before we get into Canada. Got a lot of bugs on the front of it, and I want to I roll through Toronto with a clean truck. I felt kind of awkward because Moses had just washed his truck before we met up, right? And mine was all full of bugs on the front, so he had this nice clean truck. Kind of inspired me to... <laughs> Pull in at the first blue beacon I saw in Michigan here. Hey, where we're at here, like where are we? We're, we're not too far in. We're, uh, let's see. Tell me, Google, Benton, Benton Harbor at the Flying J. So this was, uh, what exit was this at here? Let me check it out, exit 30, I-94. Gonna get a nice bath, it's gonna feel good. They have a whole ton of guys that come out. They got one, two, three, four, five here in the front, and a couple more in the or in the back here, a couple more in the front yet. So it gets done fast. Usually once you're in here, maybe 15 minutes and you're rolling out of here with a clean truck. But this guy snuck in front of me. He didn't cut in front of me, but we both exited the highway at the same time, and I was hoping he was going to get fuel. At the fuel islands. No, he drove right past the fuel islands. I was like, oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Sure enough, he turned right into the lineup for Blue Beacon. There was nobody in line. That's why I pulled off the highway. And I guess the same reason he pulled off the highway. The highway is right over there. See? You can see it from the highway. It was wide open. Now i got to wait. Oh, well. He got the inside of his reefer trailer washed out. I've never pulled a reefer before. Do you have to do that after every load? I guess that would make sense, right? Because you're hauling, let's say, fruit from California inland, and then you grab another load, maybe dry freight, to pull back to the coast to grab more fruit. I'm guessing, yeah, you'd have to wash it out so it's clean, right? It's because you're hauling food? That would make sense. Let me know down below in the comments if you haul reefer. Do you have to wash your trailer out between every single load or just before the loads where you're like hauling food that need, needs a clean trailer? Take a look. Well, they got more of it off, but yeah, definitely needs to be repolished. Looks a lot better, though. Looks a lot better. They did a better job than the Fargo location much better job let's look back here I mean, it's an old truck right you can't expect I don't know, they missed a lot here Missed a lot here wow and here what is all this I need to scrub that uh, it's hard keeping a truck nice it's hard having nice things you know Especially in the climate that uh, I work in. It's much easier down here. I mean, when you don't drive down Canadian roads, and you're always on the paved US interstates, it's a lot easier to keep your truck nice. spend a lot more money to bring it back to where it was that's for sure at least it's clean though it is clean as clean as it's gonna get so I ran inside grabbed a coffee real quick and then called in to inquire on my car status my custom status 
and they've just started working on it now. Which is great, I'm glad they're working on it. They've had it since yesterday. <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there at the broker, but uh, they got the paperwork yesterday and they're starting to work on it now. So I'm a couple hours away from the border, so if they are actually working on it now, that means it should be clear by the time I got to the border. I did say that I need to cross today or I'm not gonna make my appointment for my delivery. Just, just so people know what's at stake here. Trucker Josh could be late if you don't clear this for customs, okay? The stakes are high. <laughs> don't wanna be late. At least then it's not my fault, right? I still don't, I don't like being late because I'm the guy who has to show up there. I'm the face they're gonna see. And I've gotta tell them, yeah, I'm sorry I'm late. And then they can believe me when I tell them the truth, like the broker slowed things down or they'll just think that I'm incompetent or they'll just think that it's my fault. Or maybe they'll just blame me and get mad at me. That doesn't happen very often. Still, I don't like to be the face that shows up late, even if it's not my fault. So they know what's at stake here. So let's hope that by the time we get there in a few hours that everything will be hunky-dory and ready because you don't show up to the border when they're not prepared for you. There's fines attached to that that get charged to me. And it's a lot of paperwork, it's a big headache, and everybody gets upset, and nobody's happy. Everything has to, all your ducks have to be in a row. Crossing the border with freight is a serious thing, obviously. It's going from one country to the next. Canada needs to know what's coming into the country. US needs to know what's leaving the country. And they need to know who's taking it, from where to where, why, how much it's worth, how much it weighs, what it is, what it does, what it's gonna be used for. I don't know, I don't know. I just drive the truck. And we just received another booking for our trailer. So that means that this month is now completely booked, which is awesome. So that rental trailer has been, uh, it's been busy. It's been really good. I didn't know what to expect, but yeah, bookings keep coming in. It's good. Bridge to Canada. This way. Only. It's the only way to Canada. No re-entry to USA. Well, I can't come back? Oh, I think I can come back next time. Trucks use right lane. We're about to cross over Blue Water Bridge from Port Huron, Michigan into Sarnia, Ontario. Paperwork is all clear, good to go. Just gotta pay the toll, drive over the water, and we'll be in Ontario, Ontario, Ontario. Bridge to Canada, stop ahead and pay fare. Is it gonna be a fair price? We'll see. I think this bridge used to cost what? 15 bucks, 15, 16, 25 American, right? Something like that, let's see what it is now. I haven't crossed here in a little while. Trucks use right lane, I'm, I thank you, I'm in the right lane. Work zone begins, oh great. These bridges are always under construction, always. How much you guys think it's gonna be? Don't spoil it if you know. So we pay the toll on this side and then on the other side we go through uh, customs. Which looks very similar to this. It always confuses me or confuses me a little because I don't cross here all the time. This is not the border yet.
Thank you. Drum roll. The cost is now sixteen twenty-five. Same price. That's what I said before, right? We're in London, Ontario. I've decided to pull into the Flying J here to see if I can find parking. Because if I go much further past here, like I have the hours to probably get, well, easily get through Toronto yet. But I don't think I'm going to be able to you find have parking. Arrived at your destination. On the right side, Flying J Travel Plaza. There's a good chance I wouldn't be able to find parking anyway on the other side of Toronto at this time. So I can make it to my destination in two days from here. It'll be two long days, but we can do it. This is a pretty big flying J, so chances are, you know, there should be parking. Let's go see, I'm gonna go this way. Probably nothing in the front row, that would surprise me. Oh yeah, I can see parking back there already. Okay, good. Good. Let's find a good safe spot. Oh, is there one right here in the front? No, there's a bobtail in there. A bobtail. Two of them in the front row. That's rude. That is rude. Taking up a full 75 foot spot with your bobtail so that people with a trailer like me coming in at night don't have a place to park. Look at all these paid parking, and these are all paid parking now? I've noticed Pilot Flying J getting more and more greedy with their pay, pay to park. Like it's more and more and more spots been, have been getting blocked off and are now pay to park. That guy's not even parked in there straight. He's taking up two pay to park spots. I wonder if he paid for two? Hey, person. I don't want to park here. I want to see if there's a better spot. Yeah, we'll go for a loop around the lot and see what we find. Just like a dog, gotta circle ourselves three times before we lay down. Make sure we get the best spot. Well, we found a spot right in the back. Well lit. Right beside another long nose W900, so I know that he's gonna be careful when he wakes up in the morning and pulls out of here, I hope. The other guy beside me here has a straight shot out the driveway, so I should be safe here. I think I'm good. I'm good. I'm tired though, so I'm glad I stopped. I don't think I would have made it very far. And after here, I mean, I could stop in Cambridge. There's some parking there sometimes. It's probably all full by now. All the rest areas will be full by now, the on-routes. On the other side, I was going to stop in Pickering on the other side of Toronto. But that Petro Pass, lately when I've been stopping there, has been packed full too. And it used to be completely empty all the time. And then there's the Flying J down the street from there in uh, near Pickering. That one's all paid to park pretty much, it seems, because uh, everyone... They just sell the spots to like drivers who leave their trucks there when they're at home. And then when they're on the road, they leave their personal vehicles in their spot because they pay for that spot monthly. So there's no spots there. So this is just the safest place to park. Ah, safest place. I'm so tired. I shouldn't be rubbing my eyes like that. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me today and keeping me awake. Tomorrow's another day. We're gonna get through Ontario and Quebec tomorrow. Maybe all the way into New Brunswick. We'll see. We gotta go all the way up there. Yeah, it'll be a long drive tomorrow. A long two days ahead of us yet. We have just under 2,000, oh, just under 1,900 kilometers to go yet. That's, I can do about 1,000 kilometers in a day usually. That can push it a little further, but that's a comfortable full day. 1,000 kilometers or 620 miles or so. So I'll see you tomorrow. 
Be safe. Stay safe. And drive safe. <laughs>